this video, we're going to talk about code styling. And when everything's all said and done, we're going to have a project that looks like this one where if someone were to come in here and write their code in a way that doesn't match the styling that we want, it's going to actually produce an error and they'll have to fix it. Another thing we're going to look at is treating warnings as errors. This ensures that if there is a warning in our code, we have to fix it to make sure the build works. And then finally, we're going to look at central package management and how we can ensure that we manage our package versions centrally so that we're only adding one file when we want to update our packages and not every project file in our entire solution. So let's get into that. All right, if you've been following along since I last created the project, I've made a few modifications. I created a source folder and a test folder that required me to edit the Docker Compose, Docker Compose debug, and the Docker file. So if you want to see those edits, it's on the GitHub uh, repo. You can take a look at those. Uh, there's a commit for it. But what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and set up our build directory props file. This will allow us to enforce code styling. So I'm just going to create a new file, call it uh, directory build props. And then in the GitHub repo, you can find this file and copy and paste the contents. I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And then I'm going to tell you what each of these things does. All right, so this is the directory build props that I'm going to be using. Uh, target framework just specifies our target framework, but you know each framework has a C sharp language version. So language version allows us to specify that language version. Uh, the default is latest, so you don't really need to add this, but I am going to leave it here as latest. Um, but latest just ensures that the language version you're using is compatible with the framework you're using. Uh, nullable allows for nullable reference types. You know, this is just a good practice in terms of making sure people can understand what they're getting, that, hey, this could be something that's null. Uh, import directory build props. Uh, this ensures that if there's a project down the line uh, in a subdirectory, that if it has a directory build props, we're not going to use it. This is our uh, source of truth, this directory build props. Analysis level, this just tells us what analysis level we want to use in terms of warnings, uh, in terms of possible errors. Treat warnings as errors. This just ensures that if there is a warning, something that would normally be a warning for us, it's now going to treat it as an error and it's going to cause the build to fail. And I personally do this because I feel like it enforces good coding practices. You don't want to have a project that in 10 years has 550 warnings because in fixing some of those warnings you're going to end up breaking code as well and if you don't have good tests it's just going to create a nightmare treating warnings as errors means you have to fix those to make the build work and this makes you reanalyze how you're writing your code and you end up writing cleaner code as a result uh, generate documentation file what this does is this just uh, ensures that we create xml documentation for the files that we create so that people know what the purpose of the file is. It's just a good habit to get into. Implicit usings creates a global usings file so that you don't have to have usings for you know things that are in your project. And then invariant globalization, this just adds globalization uh, support to your project. It does increase the size of your project a little bit. So if you don't need globalization, you might go ahead and choose to remove that. Down here in our second property group, these are just our descriptive information. Uh, the title is a human readable title. The owners are whoever owns the project. The authors is a semicolon separated list of the people that are working on it. Um, and this is information that is used by NuGet uh, to, uh, if you create a NuGet package for your project. Uh, actually, I think this is supposed to be a version. So we'll just fix that. Uh, I have links in the description for uh, explanations of where you can go to Microsoft's website to get inf more information on different properties that you can add to this file, what each of these mean. You can read their descriptions on it, as well as the stuff you can do here for uh, NuGet. So those will be in the description. But yeah, so that's our directory build props. Let's see if everything still builds. We should get a couple of errors. Okay, 
we did. So let's see what we're getting errors on. Um, it looks like we're getting errors in our program CS. So if we go to our program CS, we can see then we're getting errors. This is because we're treating warnings as errors. So in this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an exception file. And if these variables are null, I'm going to throw an exception and that'll solve that problem. So let me go ahead and do that. So I've created my exception file and we have all of these warnings and this is saying missing SML comment. Um, and so this is uh, for anything that's publicly visible. To fix this problem, what we want to do is we want to just go ahead and add some comments in here. So this is our uh, application launch exception. So now we have those and again, this is, it can be a little bit annoying, but you'll thank me later. Okay, so here we still have our errors. So to fix this, we can just go ahead and add a throw, oh, add a throw new uh, launch exception and just say, um, I'm just going to copy this, add a curly brace, a curly brace, and then inside here, I'm going to go ahead and do and then supply my meter name. That solves that problem. And then we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to call this hotel endpoint. And I believe that solves those exceptions. So if we just build again, miss on a semicolon. Okay, if you're learning something from this video, consider giving it a like. But now to further enforce code styling, what we need to do is we need to add another new file. And this is going to be editor config. So this is the Rosalind compiler editor config. This is the editor config that we're going to be using. And so I'll post a description or I'll post a link to it in the description. Now, if we go ahead and build, as you can see that we have these formatting issues. So if we go to our uh, program CS file, you can see that we have these errors here and we have to move this up. And then there's a couple of other errors because it's uh, got some white spacing that it doesn't want us to have. There's an additional space here so you can see how this editor config is really helping us clean up our file and keep it all nice and tidy. And so if we save this and we do another build, we can see what we fix and what we still need to fix. Now, one of the things is if you're like, man, this is such a pain to fix all of this. Isn't there an easy way to do this? You can just run .NET format. It's going to take a second, but it's going to go through and it's going to format your files for you. And so then once it's all done, we should be able to run build and it works just fine. Boom. And it's done. So you don't have to fix those formatting issues manually. And as you are writing the code and it's showing those errors. It just has you write a little bit cleaner code. And I like following the Rosalind compiler because, you know, those are the guys that are writing C sharp for us. So just doing those two things, we're able to enforce our code styling so that everybody has to write code the same way. Um, and we've also enforced some good coding practices so that we can't just have a bunch of warnings all over the place in our code base. One other thing I want to do just to kind of clean up this project a little bit is centralize my package management. And so to do that, we create another file just like directory build props, but we're going to call this one directory packages props. All right. So this is the starting point for my directory package props. We're going to manage package versions centrally setting that to true and then this central package transitive pinning enabled all this does is if i understand what this is doing correctly what it's doing is is if a package down the line in a subdirectory has a version number we're going to override that version number then what i do is in my source file i'm going to go ahead and go to my project file and i'm going to grab this item group here 
the whole thing, just copy it. I'm gonna paste it in. And then what I wanna do here is I want to grab these package references, but what I actually wanna change them is to package version. So I'm gonna rename all those to package version. I'm gonna save that. And then in my remote manage, I can come in here and I can pull all these versions out. And one of the nice things about this is if you have you know, 70, 80 projects, something like that in your solution, uh, when you update to a newer version of OpenTelemetry, uh, if your versions were managed something other than centrally, you have 70, 80 files that you'd have to edit and commit to your repository. But this allows us to do this at the global level. And then I can actually remove this stuff here because that's all in my directory build props. So I save that. And if I run terminal build task, everything should build and it just works. Here we go. Now, one of the challenges we're gonna run into here, especially with Docker, is if we try and uh, build our Docker container, let's just do that, right? So let's build our Docker container. If we say Docker compose build, this should fail unless it's using a cache, but it should fail. Yeah, so, and what it's doing is it can't determine what projects to restore, right? Because it's saying, hey, you don't have any version numbers. So what I do is I go to my Docker file now, and all I gotta do is right before this uh, Docker restore, I'm gonna run an additional copy. And my copy is gonna be my directory uh, build props. If I can ever spell it right. And I'm gonna copy that to this. And then I'm gonna copy my directory packages props here also. Actually, I don't need the backslash. Just like that. And so now if I go back and I run my Docker Compose, it's going to be able to restore those files. It's going to be able to build those files. Everything is just going to work. Yeah, we've centralized our package management for just a little project maintenance to keep our project looking clean. And then we also have added some style enforcement. So if anybody wants to work on this project, they're going to have to work on it the and style it the way we want it to style and so then you can go through the editor config and you can kind of look at some more of these and see exactly what these do and then modify them so that it matches the style that you want please let me know in the comments some things that you do to help your project stay clean because i'm always looking for ways to improve as a developer these are just a few of the things that i do i hope you learned something in this video i hope it was entertaining for you and i'll catch you in the next one